Welcome to the Select Board Board of Health Wednesday, November 1st, 2017 meeting. Um, we, I just want to make an announcement that this meeting is recorded. And we will start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. Everyone doesn't mind standing. <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Um, we have minutes of the previous meetings, April 19th and October 18th. Do you want a motion individually or can we do it together? Together is fine. Okay. I make a motion to approve the minutes of April 19th and October 18th. Um, I will second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So please make that unanimous. Um, Trevor is not here tonight. He's uh, out on the Cape with a school board. So um, we had a school board finance committee meeting on the 24th. Uh, which we had the first run through of um, their capital needs. Um, and they took some comments, and I think we'll probably be meeting several more times on that. Uh, Berkshire Brew had the tour um, with Jim McGovern on last Friday, and it was wonderful. It was a celebration of good local businesses and opportunity to know the per people behind the product and, and support all the good things that are happening from Berkshire Brew. So that was nice. Kip, did you have anything that you wanted to announce? Um, not really. Okay. Um, we're, we'll come back to Wendy's town administrator's report. We just have Craig Warner here from Delta Sand and Gravel, so we're just going to bump up him so he doesn't have to wait all night. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Craig. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, so as Carolyn said, Craig Warner from Delta Sand and Gravel. Uh, we own the communications tower that's up on the Pecumtuck Pecum Ridge, which is really the most visible one up there from down below. Um, it's inevitable probably in the next few years that we're going to have to replace our tower. And the thinking was that if we could get it away from the cliff a little more, uh, it might be a benefit to the town. People might like to see that. Uh, the situation we're in is if, if one of our tenants comes to us and it looks like we're going to have to replace the, the tower sooner than later, usually time is of the essence. So we might not have a choice but to put it within the current lot that basically sits right on the cliff. Um, but knowing that that's not happening yet, um, if we were able to acquire a little additional land up there, it would give us the opportunity when that happened to be ready to set the tower back from the cliff a little bit. Um, it's about a 6,000 square foot lot right now, so it's a little over a tenth of an acre. And the proposal was just to t basically take a mirror image of that off, the off of where it is now, so another 6,000 square feet. If the town was be, be willing to sell it, uh, Delta would be happy to uh, buy it at fair market value or a little more, um, assuming it wasn't a, a crazy price. So that's kind of what we're looking at. Um, I, I don't have any problem with it. Like I had mentioned earlier, Craig, um, and uh, Kip could chime in here, but I, I uh, unfortunately, we wouldn't be able to um, make a decision tonight because we don't have a, an appraisal. Right. So um, given the fact that you're here tonight, um, if Kip doesn't object, then I think what we'll do is we'll ask to get some kind of appraisal or figure out something and um, have have you cover the cost, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, then we'll pursue it. That sounds fun to me. Okay. I didn't. <clears throat> yeah, we, I mean, and I realize something okay. like this can take quite a few months, and that's one reason to do it now. So we're not in a rush at this point, so however okay. that works time-wise time, time wise is, is fine. Well, I'm not sure uh, how, you know, we could probably get a commercial appraiser. Oh, well, if you take care of that, we Yeah, could. if actually, if you... It's your timeline. Yeah. Okay, no, that's fine, I would say. Um, actually, uh, that would be helpful, because then that Wendy doesn't have to do that. Right, and as long as that's okay from a municipal state standpoint, I don't know the laws as far as who can get the appraisal, who can't, uh, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should just talk about that that's and just, just make sure we're doing it the right way mm -hmm. before we go too far. Okay. But, but absolutely, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, if, if you don't mind picking up that cost... 
Um, I think we can move ahead. Would that be all right? Yes. Okay, me. I think we can move ahead with that. Okay. And um, I mean, I don't have any objection. And certainly now that I found out that we can't do the sidewalks with you, then <laughs> there really isn't anything holding this up. Okay. Well, that's, that's great. Does there need to be any kind of a formal vote in the future? Um, we, that, would, we would have to um, vote to, to put this on a warrant, and then we would um, get the town meeting to support. Well, this is the process land of low value. We talked about that a little bit. I'll okay. just, yeah, that, I'll and it might fall in we'll under that. Have too. A, to that. Okay. That sounds good. I'm so we'll assuming it's under $35,000. What's that? I'm assuming it's under $35,000. Oh, yeah. Yes. You know yeah. what? So. You're right. It probably, we don't have to go to town meeting on that. So okay. it, would be, it would be just our vote. Okay. So um, I'm sure as long as you keep in communication with Wendy and move it yep. forward, then we can move okay. forward. That'd be great. Thank okay. you so much. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Have a nice evening. You too. Thanks. Um, we have a hearing at 6.15 for a liquor license, but um, no one's here yet, and it's a little early, so we'll go back to Wendy. Okay. Um, we'll talk about special tab meeting later. Budget, um, the capital request went out last night to the department heads in the school. They're due December 1st by bylaw. And uh, the operating budgets will be going out um, hopefully Friday for people to request their budget request forms. And they're due December 22nd. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, we met council and uh, the police chief and uh, actually Trevor was here. So he joined us, met with uh, folks from New England Patient Network yesterday morning talk about what's going on and um, a couple things that came out of that meeting is that we've asked them to provide a copy of the lease. They say they're still a going thing. They will have a lease for us hopefully in a couple of weeks and council's drafting um, amendment to the host agreement for consideration. So that will... Did they happen to share the address of the lease location? Um, they're permitted at four, correct? Or are they permitted at ten? So I think that's where it is. I don't, I'm, okay. four is the house, right? I think so. So, um, so yes, I'm, <clears throat> I believe it's at um, <clears throat> where they were originally talking of being. In the old plastic, mm -hmm. Deerfield Plastics building? Mm -hmm. Well, something for you in future meeting. Okay. Um, I also talked with her about possibly going, using their, council services on a retainer basis. So she's gonna submit some proposals of how that might work. <clears throat> and I'll bring them, of course, bring them before you. Um, let's see, I sent you the email about the snow plowing contract. Um, the, yeah. the, the quotes were due yesterday and Kevin and I opened them up. We had four applications. Um, and basically the, it was set up for people to bid on the hourly rate with an uh, equipment and operator, and as I said in the memo that the two, um, the bidders that were low and um, were Galensky and Gilmore, and he needs the two to cover sort of all the all over the town and then specifically with different equipment um, in uh, Old Deerfield. So, so it's going to be just those two. Yes. Okay. Um, so. Other highway items, um, salt shed repair projects been completed. Um, the repair work that uh, is done, that needs painting, but the department will do that work. In-house, um, um, there was a call from a resident from Lower Road, I think it was today, um, that came to our office, and apparently he said he's been complaining for 10 years about a guardrail problem. Kevin went right out to look at that, and he came back and said that he's going to fix that, and he saw some other guardrail that needed work, so he'll be attending to that. Um, let's see. Um, one thing that's coming up, it was going to happen tonight if it wasn't raining. I'll speed up. I can finish my report before 6.15. Okay. Um, right now, people are driving, including me, this way, and around the building different ways where it's sort of dangerous. We're going to 
make it an official one way going around the building shortly and they're going to be painting you know arrows and that kind of thing it was going to happen tonight um, but the rain has put that off but I just wanted to mention it to alert you and the public and all of us who sometimes come in that or often come in that way that it will be a counterclockwise situation around the building oh I think that's really good so for I, safety it always purposes, makes me so nervous it, me too and I that. Yeah. So, well, then maybe um, they should install one of those things. If you go the wrong way, the prongs come up and it blows out all your tires. <laughs> okay. We'll see if Avis has one they can give us. So, um, all right. One other thing. Let's see. Um, safety. Oh, we submitted um, a Maya, our insurance agency, grant today for um, we can only apply for up to $10,000. They had a list of things you can apply for. We've gotten them in the past. We submitted for something just under 10, and it's for a safety trailer that comes with this, both for the public works, safety trailer that comes with barricades. The ones they use are not legal. They're old style. And um, cones, traffic cones and things like that. So it's something they can just take and go if there's some kind of, as we've had lately, problems with tree down or, you know, right. have all that ready to go. And backup cameras for trucks. So that's a request that's gone in. Um, that I think is it. oh the only other thing is I'm we're going I'm going through the church again with an architect this time to get an estimate on a feasibility study, and I'll come back and talk with you about that after that meeting. That's, I'll um, leave that. Would in. you be able to have that ready to go for the um, our next meeting on the? That, I'm hoping that okay. I will. Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. Kip. Would you just make sure that um, you connect with Wendy on that and Kip to make sure you have. If you have any questions, I get the answer. Um, sure. Okay. I would appreciate that. Okay. So is that it? We'll be talking during the meeting, but that's it for my okay. report. Yes. Um, great. Um, it's two more minutes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, proposed cemetery rules and regulations. Um, do you feel comfortable with those? Sure. Okay. Do you want to make a motion? Um, sure. sure, I make a motion that we adopt the cemetery rules and regulations um, on how to describe it. Well, as <coughs> recommended by the Department oh, of Public I'm Works. Sorry. Recommended by the Department of Public Works and Town and Administrator. Town Administrator. Um, That's what the red writing was for. Yes. Yeah. Blue that one. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I second that. Is there any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, this is the renewal of the Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans Service District contract. I intermunicipal agreement. I um, asked Wendy if Joanne Carney had seen it and if she recommended it, but um, I'm, I imagine that she did. I think they voted on it, and yeah. she would have told okay. me. Um, um, did you have a chance to review that, Kip? I did. Okay. Do you, are you okay with that? Yep. I didn't have any issues with okay. that. Okay. Like you want to make a motion sure. on that? I move we sign and renew our municipal agreement with the Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans Service District. Uh, I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, one more minute. <laughs> um, the Massachusetts Cultural Council grant. Um, we accept for forty five hundred dollars. Did you? Ever? We don't. It's not a matching grant. We don't have to call them members. Okay. No, we just agree to. It's our annual money. grant that comes every year. Okay. I move that we accept and sign the Massachusetts Cultural Council grant contract for Deerfield Local Cultural Council in the amount of forty five hundred dollars. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We got that done too. Um. Special town meeting, Wendy. Uh, we, why don't we talk about that after okay. maybe do the appointments oh, okay. and the write-offs, oh, seven right. and eight. Why don't we, all right, why don't, uh, I think we have time to do the appointments for the part-time police officers. Mm -hmm. Do you want to make a motion on that? Okay. I move the select board appoint the following part-time police officers, Francis, I'm mean, sorry, Nicholas Feld, Matthew Bader, and Connor Parnell. Parnell. I second that. Is there any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And Matthew does spell it with one T. In case you thought that. Might oh, be okay. Right. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I figured it was spelled properly. 
Um, it's close enough to 6.15. <laughs> you're all sitting here. Why don't you come up? By the time you sit in the chair, you'll be all ready to go. My, my phone says it's 6.15, okay. if that helps. Yeah. We might want discussion on number eight anyway. Okay. Yeah, that's why I wanted to wait. Why don't you introduce yourself and as uh, advocate for Johnny Figs? Good evening. I'm, my name is Christy Bodine. I'm an attorney from Amherst. I'm representing uh, Gianni Figs Restaurant LLC on an application for a new all alcoholic annual license uh, for his restaurant at 6B Elm Street in South Deerfield. And I have with me Luigi Calabrese, um, who's the man, who's the the front front end manager for the restaurant. Gianni couldn't be here tonight. He wanted to be. He had a very large party, making a reservation. I spoke to he or did I speak to you, Wendy? I'm somebody no. yeah, about this, but um, if he were to be here, he would have had to close the restaurant. And he would have lost a lot of money. So if you want him to come in at another date, he's happy to do that. But no, that's all right. He can't be here tonight. Thank you. Um, I has also have brought with me an affidavit of notice of mailing to the abutters and all of the green cards and return receipts that you'll need for the application. So I'm going to hand that in now. Give that to Key. Two. Two of the abutters did not return the return receipts, but the rest of them are there. I think there were eight total, so we have six out of eight um, okay. that got the notice. I also have here a letter from... Um, Gianni regarding his inability to attend the restaurant, or attend the hearing tonight. Um, That's fine. I, we you did would email rather me. have him be successful. Now. You emailed me. So. Okay, good. Um, and the application's been submitted. Do you have any questions for, for us at this time? I have none. I didn't either. I, I, just, I did want to let you know that um, when this goes through and we process it, that if it comes back before January 1st, um, you know that ABCC is really slow. Yes. But if it does come back, um, I'm, I'm sure if, if KIPP has no um, problem, then we would, we would pro, prorate it. Is that oh, all right? Oh, prorate the unlicensed. That would be very nice. Yeah. Sure. I yeah. mean, there's no, I mean, we're talking probably a couple weeks at the yeah. most. The because um, all the renewals go through, as you know, all the renewals go through the ABC during December. So, if this hits them before, you know, if it hits them very quickly, they may be able to process it uh, before. Well, we'll, we'll try to get this out we'll as soon as possible. I appreciate that. That'd but be great. I did want to say that we certainly would not um, require a full. That's that's payment. very kind of you. I know it's up to your discretion. So mm -hmm. we we really appreciate that. That's a huge. Um, huge benefit. So we'll. I mean, we'll keep our fingers crossed that it does come through yeah. before all the renewals, but just in case. Thank you. I'm going right. to make sure. Okay, so you want to make a motion? Um, I make a motion that we approve the all alcohol license for Gianni Figs um, Restaurant LLC. Here it is. LLC and all alcohol license. I yeah. second that. Is there any further discussion? And also the no. assignment of the manager, I think you need oh, to. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. And assignment. Of, who, of of Gianni Calabrese as the manager. Okay. I don't know whether you need to vote that separately, but let's be safe. Um, well, there's always a manager assigned with a new right. license anyways. But. And you want that in the motion. Yeah. Gianni Calabrese. Yeah. Gianni? Gianni. G-I-A-N-N-I. Okay. Calabrese. C-A-L-A-B-R-E-S-E. Did you get that? Yep. Okay. What? And then I'll second that. Okay. And then all those in favor? Aye. Hi. Okay. Thank you so much. Really no problem. It. We're happy. Thank to, you, guys. I happy to move so this well. On. I just hear from so many people. I what heard, a draw yeah, this it's is. really how wonderful. How much they love it. Thank how you. great yeah. the food is. Good. Thanks for your acceptance. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I've been there several times. It's really nice. That's Thank good. Thank you, sir. Thanks an awful lot. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, have a good night. Bye bye. Appreciate it. Um, get out early enough, we can hear the uh, romantic stylings of. Uh, Oh, what's his name? Who's singing there tonight? Oh, Lenny. Lenny yeah, Sarcone, by. my favorite. Right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Um, so we're back down to the, one of the, um, is a write-off collections for Deerfield Emergency Medical Services. This is, this is our EMT service before 
um, we became South County Yeah, EMS. you have a memo on this? Yes. You were sent this? I just want to say something to council. It's, um, it's right here. We, we spoke about this at the um, SCIMS meeting. This is, it's, um, one of these is, there's a couple of these that were due to a death, death yep. of the people. So, you now you have to go against their estates and we were not successful. So that's $28,847. And then um, the rest is, is like beyond six okay. years. If not been able to collect it for whatever reason. So I'm just curious what, what attempts have been made other than as, um, it, was it someone in the town that sent them yeah. bills? Was it ever issued to a yes. collection agency? It, yes. was, it went through the it, collection it went, agency, right? Yeah. Well, the billing company. And, yeah. Um, yeah, it got, they got behind. The billing. But well, has it ever been to an outside uh, collection agency? Um, I, I don't believe I don't, so, but I don't. I don't, don't think so. I, yeah. I don't think so. I think it all only went through um, where we paid, kept paying... Um, Comstar, Comstar to, keep, yeah. to keep billing. So it was just Comstar themselves yes. that kept doing it and they were unsuccessful. But yeah. they have a limit on how many times they do. Yeah. I mean, you, it, it's... Um, the, yeah. Would it be beneficial will, to look into a, collect, a collection agency that does it on a percentage basis? I mean... I, are you I talking about going forward with SCEMS or you mean with this? Well, this. this. Well, um, well, you know, I don't... I, don't, I just don't know... Um, you know, is there some sort of rule or regulation that after so many years you, you well, can't collect? Well, after six years, yeah, after that's six attached. years you can't collect. Okay. It's attached. And yeah. I actually, before we reference this law, talked to um, probably the county's leading collection attorney because I know him, and yeah. he basically said really after that. No. Okay. Um, they will be um, following up, though. There are some uh, bills that would, they will be continuing to follow up on that are within that time period and have not well, been ruled which out for other reasons. Were less than six years. Right. right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So I once I think once they get over six years old we can't um, Yeah this it's the, the it's statute the MGL attached. MGL two sixty Yeah I read I, yeah. I read that but I d I don't know what it means so it just means after that it's like dead. All right. So what, okay. the, what we're doing is just taking it off the books, right? basically. And that was why we wanted um, to be a little bit more aggressive and have a, a more, f uh, you know, uh, more of a complete policy for South County. Because number one, we're doing more runs. And so the potential there is for more money um, to be not, not collectible. So we want to collect it. So I, you know, we had talked about having being more aggressive. Um, okay, I just I just wanted to make sure that it was something that we're just not um, dropping the ball on. That I mean, I I I, under, I don't know this, but if you're saying that after six years, you know, it's something you can't collect on, then there's no sense. You might as well make it easy for the town accountant to get rid of it and just move That's on. That's basically what we're doing. Okay. All right, then, I move we vote to authorize the town accountant to remove outstanding debts in the amount of $239,336.06 from the town of Deerfield's EMS receivable balance. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, that includes the, yeah, that includes the death amounts of people that died. Yep. All right, um, but I think that's one of the reasons we wanted to have a policy and, and go to a collection agency yeah. so that we don't get into the same issue with South County. I know that, uh, I know we had discussion about it, but I don't really remember. Um, well, you have, you, have to, you have to do this within the six years, sure. but you also have to, uh, you know, determine what, is it because it's not, enough information or is it misinformation or is it because persons like when we will respond on 91 those are the ones that we don't usually collect on because if the you know they're from not usually in the sure. area we don't have an address so if the information is it 
all incorrect, it's very hard to track those down. Well, this is probably a discussion that we should have at SCEMS, not here, but you know, maybe that uh, part of the information collected is uh, a copy of their driver's license so you know where they're from and stuff like that. I think yeah. under the new software um, that they have, um, because a lot of this is insurance related as well. Sure. So a lot of the times they are, um, when they download all that stuff, we now get that stuff from the hospital. You know, I mean, it's coordinated somehow mm -hmm. between the ambulance and the hospital, which wasn't before. You know, the, our software is integrated or something. Mm -hmm. I think that we paid for the whatever it is to be, so all our, all our things are online. Mm -hmm. I don't really understand it, how they do it, but. Um, Magic. <laughs> I, I, you know how the hospital is. They don't let you come in <laughs> unless you have, like, everything. So that's pretty much that's, true. <laughs> that's pretty much what is checked out when they drop off the patient. Is there, It's integrated now. So there's less chance of misinformation. Um, but we can check with Zach at our next EMS meeting. Sure. Make sure that that is um, what I'm rem remembering and I'm not misremembering. Um, Wendy, do you want to follow up on anything else? Um, no, just your signatures before you go into executive session. Um, these are just the ones for Carolyn to sign. These are votes you took tonight. Mass okay. Cultural Council well, and the Veterans like Services, and this, this takes all the licensing all right. at the um, and the, the appointments. What, one thing Bruce, did you? What? I, the only reason I, one thing I would like to just talk to you briefly about is That's for um, both of you to sign. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, I'm the chair of the sewer study committee, and we don't necessarily have anyone to take the minutes except for myself. And I'm, I find it very difficult to, you know, be involved with the ongoing debate, and it's kind of technical. So consequently, I really stink at taking the minutes. Is there any way that there's someone in the town hall that I can, you know, get to help with this? Or is it, can it be as simple as what the planning board used to do, have the meetings recorded and have someone in, in are, town hall do it after. Are they being uh, broadcast or cable? Sometimes they are, sometimes they're okay. not. And, and I think since they've moved from here, they have not been. So, you know, I definitely can uh, check with, is it Chris Collins? Yeah. And, and check that, you know, see if they can be recorded. Mm -hmm. well, um, let's, let me know when there are meetings. I'm going to try to go when I can, and we'll figure something out to make sure that you get that. Okay. Um, nine men and no one can take minutes. <laughs> well, it, it, it's one thing to sit there and no, write, but then no, no, no. what, what ends up happening is, you know, hard. they, you know, I miss what some people thought, are saying, um, or they look to me for something, and I'm like, did I, Jeff Upton volunteer at was it CIPC um, to take this? Someone, uh, well, I either Jeff or um, to take Jack Davies. Jack Davies usually records okay. it. All right. And then um, he writes his minutes based on the recording because it's it is hard to um, participate I and take minutes. <laughs> I, I, I mean, well, I did it when we had nobody, and it was it's really tough and it's very slow. And and, it, and I feel rather incomplete because the person I'm replacing, I mean, he would almost write down every time somebody sneezed or blinked. So for when I, when I do it, it's it's. It's missing a lot of information. One much, thing I, I created a much less, much more brief. Yeah. But don't I, worry, that's what I. I, I have this some um, minutes form that is very helpful. You can just fill in basic things. Um, I'll get that. You need you. to know the time. It's important to have the time that you. Oh, well, I get uh, the start the meeting and you adjourn it. Who was there? Who was the there? And the decisions and the, votes. and the items discussed. If we vote, and I, and that, I get as that. As long as you get anything that, else, it's okay. kind of like. There was a lot of talk about the sewer pipe, so. Oh. Um, okay. So. Anyways, okay. I just wanted to come clean on it and say I needed some assistance. Okay, let me know when the meetings okay. get so. Um, Bruce, why don't you, I'm um, I why I'm that. signing I this? If I'm there, I can. Um, what would you like to say? Who, me? Yes. Well, I would just like to plead my case again. I see you on the agenda you had uh, New England Bakers. And um, I know I've um, said this in the past, but I would just like to plead my case again. I thank you for your time first. Uh, 
I'm here to ask you not to reconsider extending the uh, purchase and sale agreement with New England Bakers. Right now, we still owe a little more than $1.3 million for the property. Even if we sell the land, we would still owe approximately a million dollars on the land, and we've lost ownership and control for any future use of this unique piece of land. It could be used for a new police station, something that will definitely be required in the future. Uh, gradually moving town offices to this location as needed, or for potential housing if necessary, and or even temporary recreational use. Uh, the town found out how prohibitive land parcels were when it tried to uh, look around for um, a parcel to purchase for the ambulance service several years ago. And since then, it's become a lot more prohibitive. And a good example is uh, in 2011, we had a three-acre uh, parcel sell for 350000 In 2017, this year, we had a two-acre par parcel uh, with, uh, with a uh, house for sell for 650000 and also in 2017, we had a 0.4 acre parcel uh, with a small house sell for 315000 I understand that they were right on Route 5, but it goes to show you the trend of the commercial properties in this town. Right now, there's no other parcel uh, in the center of town that has town water and sewer that's that large that could easily accommodate centralizing municipal services such as this parcels. As far as taxes, with the potential build-out costs, and these, again, these are vague figures because I really don't have, you know, some of the other ones. But with a potential build-out cost of approximately $5 million, a probable assessed value might, and I really doubt that it would, but it might come in as high as $3 million. At $3 million, a rate of 1540, the tax would be about 46000 a little over 46000 If you put any credence to the cost of community service fa uh, services, uh, that was put out several years ago. It's actually been quite a while here. Uh, they, at that point in time, said the commercial industrial varied from 49 to 51 cents. Uh, in other words, for um, every dollar that they, uh, those commercial industrial paid in, it cost about 49 to 51 cents for uh, servicing those, of uh, town expense servicing. So if we use a 0.5 multiplier, a 50 cent multiplier, your net on a $46,000 uh, uh, tax bill is, for the town, would only be about $23,000. Uh, NEB would uh, not be liable for any personal property because, on their equipment because they're classified as a manufacturer and as such they're exempt. Now that $23,000, of course, doesn't even uh, include any uh, uh, discount for any TIF that they might be allowed on top of that. So for approximately $300,000 a year, $300,000, and a tax revenue of $23,000, we're giving up forever a right to own and control the only open parcel of land in the center of town that could be used to centralize all of our future municipal needs. This decision would not affect us much presently, but could have an everlasting impact for the future. Please do not continue to extend this agreement. If you do choose to extend this agreement, at least require that any future owner of the building of land put forth a 100% bond to cover any future costs of the town that might be, that might or would require the town to foreclose on the uh, property, remove the building if necessary, and a requirement that building not be left abandoned or left in disarray for any reason. And I would like to thank you for your time and listening to me again. <laughs> thank you, Bruce. Thanks. I have a copy of that, or could you email it to me? <clears throat> Either way. Um, and just as, just as an example, uh, the town garage, I don't know what we ended up paying for that, but was that around six million or something like that? Just shy of seven, I believe. Seven million. And it's assessed value. Uh, the land is assessed for 367.5. The building is assessed for uh, just over one million. So it goes to show you, and part of the reason for that is, is it's a very specialized building. And it's, you know, commercial property is assessed in an entirely different way than residential. So it's not necessarily based on cost. You know, it's a, a lot of it has to do with market value. And this, you know, their building will be a very specific building. So if they decide to leave or can't make it or one thing or another, uh, chances are you're not going to find another baker that's going to want to move into that building. So... But I know. Well, there's a lot to consider. There's also the I know there's other things. Multiplier effects. I am just pleading you know, my case again. 
50 employees eating at Jerry's on a regular basis. I mean, that's income that stays in the community. But whatever. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your input. Um, do you want to make a motion to go into executive session? Um, do I read it this way? <laughs> or, uh, well, I can do it. Yeah. The chair Thank declares and moves uh, pursuant to MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21A6, to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property as an open meeting may have detrimental effect on the negotiation, negotiating position of the select board. Hi, Henry Camosa. Oh, you got a second oh, it for I me. second, I'm sorry. No, that's all right. Then you can say. Hi, Henry Camosa. Hi, Carolyn Ness. All right, thanks. <laughs> we will not be um, returning to open session. Thank you. Our next meeting is November 15th at 6 p.m. And then we also have a meeting on November 29th. Um, so thank you very much. Have a good evening. <laughs>